I first got into the ministry, or I felt that I was called into the ministry, there was a tugging. And when you feel that tug, you, you're not happy. Because when I was into drugs, um, I, I felt uncomfortable being with the people in drugs because I knew the people that wasn't doing drugs could see that I was doing the drugs. And then when I was over here, the drug people saw me. And so I had this conflict. And I was being battled. But then I started hearing about how God does certain things and, and what the end's coming and so forth. And I heard a minister preach a sermon on the mark of the beast in the end times. And when he preached this message, it absolutely scared the hell out of me. It scared me so bad that I was afraid to come out of a trailer that I was staying in and down in Woodsville, Ohio. And... So I got to praying and begging God to forgive me. And you really don't have to beg God to forgive you. You just got to believe he will. And But I had a suitcase about this big, this tall, and this wide. And, there, and I started writing letters to God. Now that might sound foolish. But the Spirit of God that was dealing with me brought back memory of things that I had done. And nothing was good. The bad outweighed the good. So I condemned myself to the place where I wanted to commit suicide a couple times and did try. But I would write these letters down. And I'm not talking about one or two pages. I'm talking about six, eight, ten pages. I put them in an envelope, stick them down in there, and I had this briefcase full of them. So anyway, my ex-girlfriend, her father was a Pentecostal. I guess he was a Pentecostal. He never, I never seen him go to church, but he really believed in David Terrell's messages. And he always listened to him, and he always condemned me and said that we couldn't get married because I'd been married before. Anybody ever been in a church where if you've been married before, you're an outcast? Um, today, I guess all of us would be out. <laughs> now that the, you know, the homos are there, well, what in the world are we going to do now? It would be 100% of us. But anyway, I... Uh, I got this fear of God in me, and I got to praying, and I started begging God that, that he would forgive me, and I said, God, I'm naive, and I'm gullible. Please send me to somebody that's real. Well, he did. He sent me to my pastor, Brother Jenkins, and he called me out, and Rudy took me to all these other so-called preachers that used and worked in the gifts. And we would, I'd sit on one side of the church, Rudy would sit on the other side, and they'd come to me, and I would tell Rudy exactly what they were going to say before it happened. And it's like I knew in advance. And so I knew that I was called into the ministry, and that had to be reconfirmed. Sometimes, just like um, uh, Anna was saying that this person had cancer, but Rev had told her that she... She wasn't going to die of cancer, and then another minister confirmed it, and he always confirms it with two or three witnesses. <clears throat> so I guess two or three witnesses wasn't enough for me. I had to go to the 30, 40 <laughs> different preachers to find out. So anyway, when I did go uh, up to Delaware, and I was confirmed, and I was, he told me that I was called in the ministry and very reluctant to call in anybody in the ministry because the bigger you are, the harder it is, the more you're going to got to go through. And I thought, oh, God, i got to lose all this weight. But what it was is the life that you do when, when you are on the front line as a minister of the gospel and you have people sitting out here that they have a soul and they have a body that maybe be healed or maybe they have been battered uh, and abused and all the things that go along with life and you're up here and you're, you're here my ministry is, is called to heal the broken hearted because there's so many people that have broken hearts from things that you have been through all of your life and the one thing that I know for sure is that I've been through hell many times over and I know because I put myself there when you run from God, you actually put yourself in a position to go through what you shouldn't have to go through if you would just give up, give in, and follow him. And so when I was staying in Hilliard, Ohio with my friends, I was questioning this in my mind over and over. God, what do you want me to do? Has anybody ever asked God what he really wants you to do? 
Did you actually get your answer right away? No. Some of you probably still don't have it. Because what happens is, is when you do get your answer, what you're going to find out is that it might not be what you want to know or want to hear. But anyway, in this particular vision and this particular thing that happened to me, it was this scripture. And this one here stands out so much further than all the other scriptures in the Bible because it confirmed to me that I truly had a calling in my life to go and do what God wants me to do. And it says in the, the uh, 16th chapter, 15th verse will start, it says, And he said unto them, which means me as well, because I took this literally, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Now, <clears throat> question. It didn't say go you. It didn't say go Bob. It said go ye. So that means that everybody that is called in the ministry, this is who he's talking to. So if you're called to sing, if you're called to preach, if you're called to play music, you're called to be a deacon, you're called just to be there, to be the strength, the supporter, whether you're in the ministry for administration or whatever you're doing to be part of the ministry, you are that there in the world. Because the ministry can't go by itself. It has to have a backbone. It has to have people stand behind it. God is going to do some miracles that is absolutely going to be covered on TV. And all the news media is going to carry these miracles because God is going to get victory over the devil's work, workhouse. <clears throat> he said, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. See, being baptized doesn't save you, but believing and baptized saves you. But he that believeth not shall be damned. Here's what happens with a lot of us that are Christians today. We have so much compassion and love for someone that we want to see saved that may never be saved. So what happens is we get to begging God and praying and praying and praying and trying to shove religion down their throat and they keep responding negative and they keep backing away from you. And what happens is you're working on the wrong thing. He said, go ye into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. He didn't say go back and keep preaching and preaching and preaching and preaching and preaching. Go, you know, you can get saved and still go to, go, go to, go to hell. Or you can get saved and go to heaven. You say, well, how can you get saved and go to hell? You can turn your back on God, that's how. You can, you can deny God in everything that He does. There's people today that still do not believe that God heals. And it's in the book. See, I know God. I know that God honors faith. You hear me? And faith is what moves God's hand. And if you have faith in God, you can say unto this mountain, whatever that mountain might be, it ain't a physical dirt mountain, it could be, but I don't believe that's what he's talking about. I believe it's the mountains that you have in your life that hinder you from having joy, peace, happiness, prosperity, good health, and having the things that God made promises to us as a believer. It says, these signs shall follow them that believe. What signs is he talking about? If you talk to the church today, you'll find that most people in church are sick, weak. They don't have, they're they're pro, not prosperous. They're, they're going through battles after battles, and there's no victorious speak come from their lips. You have to speak to the mountain. You have to say to this mountain, Be thou removed. Be cast in the sea, and not doubt it in your heart, but believe those things which you say. Sometimes you will say, God, I want you to do this and this and this. And the next thing you know, oh God, why didn't this happen? It said, these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. It ain't talking about the preacher's name. It ain't talking about the organization's name. It's talking about the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. They shall, they shall what? They shall cast out devils. Now, how do you cast out a devil? Because a devil is a spirit that dwells within a being as well as an outside angel that has a demonic spirit that walks through the land trying to devour and kill, destroy those that are not spiritual, those that aren't saved, and those that are not 
uh, serious about serving God. And I'm going to tell you something, and after this message today, it's up to you because I'm going to drop the bomb in your hands. The Bible says that Jesus Christ is soon to return many times. He tells you many signs to watch for. He tells you to prepare yourself. He tells you to study for yourself a workman not to rightly divide the word of truth. Some people say, well, do you want to go to this prayer meeting? No, I don't want to go to no prayer meetings. You know why I don't want to go to prayer meetings? Because they're only going to talk about what they think. I want to go to where the Spirit of God is moving in the church and God is doing things and you see it with your physical eyes. You're a witness to God's power. You're a witness to His Spirit. You're a witness to the healings. How many has truly been healed of something from God? Where did it happen? Probably in church. The Bible says there's going to be wars and there's going to be rumors of wars. Is that not happening? We don't have to fear it. we just got to be knowledgeable enough to know what's going on so that when it does happen, we already know it. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name, shall they cast out devils, and they shall speak with new tongues. He ain't talking about changing your little language. He's talking about the heavenly language. One where you can speak in the language of God and speak directly to God, howbeit in the Spirit you speak a mystery. And being able to be used of God is a very, very important thing. Because, see, many are called, but few are chosen. And to be chosen in the kingdom of God, that means that you are chosen and you can't get away from it. The gifts and calling are without repentance. The gifts and the calling are without a repentance. But if you're going to do something for God and you're going to put yourself on the line, you can't fear what the devil's going to do to you. Because he already has plans what he wants to do to you, but God's not going to let him do it until your time is up. There's a death ticket on every single one of us, a date that we are all going to give up the ghost and go home, either to heaven or to hell. Well, I don't want to go to hell. Well, then you better start living for heaven. You better start doing something for God instead of sitting on the back burner and letting everybody else do it. But you have to have a desire. And I don't know what your desire is. I would hope your desire is that we win many people to the kingdom of God. Do you realize that the Bible was written for believers, but it was instructions on how to believe and what to believe and what to do after you believe? To believe in God that you cannot see? I see you, and I don't know where it is. I don't know if it's in a house or a hospital because it's too dark, but I see a person laying on a bed, and I see you walking up, laying your hands on this individual, and God raises them up. You'll have a healing ministry because God will instill that within you. You'll have compassion when you see somebody that's sick and afflicted that you want to be able to help them and you'll have the anointing in your hands to do that. And if nobody told you today they love you, brother, I do. You understand that? God is assigning two heaven angels to be on your doorstep to watch over you and one is a sign for Bill to protect him. And he shall be delivered. Is that the right spot? Yeah. Huh? It is. Do you, ever, do you ever feel a surge of pain from right here going down and then stop a little bit and then just shoot right on down here? Yes, I do, Father. 
Has the doctors diagnosed this? Oh, yeah. Yes. What, what did they say? Well, I have um, fibromyalgia, and um, I have been inoperable. With them, but not with Jesus. <clears throat> What's going to happen to you today is going to release your faith like it has never been released. You're going to know that the hand of God has been watching over you and has protected you. I don't know if you have told this to Sharon or not, but I see you sitting in a home contemplating to just give up and end it all. But the devil is a liar and the truth is not in him for the hand of the Lord is upon thee this day and thou shalt be delivered saved and healed and blessed Wendy, I want you to start moving your legs up and down like you're marching. A little faster. 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 Okay, now turn around here. Bend over and touch your toes. I know. I know you don't. That's why I said to go ahead. <laughs> what happened? Oh, wow. <laughs> Father, you touched Pam and Rudy's dog. And I'm asking God that you touch his granddaughter's cat and dissolve that fluid off of the heart, Lord, and enhance its life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Father, I bring precious before your throne of grace and mercy. I ask God that you protect her and watch over her throughout this last year of school and that, God, you open up a big door for the desire that she has to be able to speak to those through sign language. I ask God you to bless her heart's desires and bring good friends in her life, ones that will be a true friend. And I see a financial blessing coming your way. Father, this unspoken request to be known, you know and I know and she knows, we, I'm asking God that you take care of this, that it doesn't go bad, but it comes out to a favor and even shortens things that has to be done. I ask God you to protect her in Jesus' name and watch over her. Amen and amen. And if nobody told you today they love you, girl, you know. I went back to the doctor, and I was diagnosed with some rare, because I'm so special, rare disease that can, is in my esophagus. And he said I'd have to be on medication all the rest of my life. And I told my sister, and I'm telling this and claiming this, it's not medication, it's dedication to the Lord. And so... This will be your story. This will be your song. And this will be your victory this day. For I declare it in the name of Jesus Christ. From the top of your head to the soles of your feet. Sister, be thou made whole in Jesus' mighty name. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody praise him.
Michaela shall not go blind, saith the Lord. Father, touch this child from the crown of its head to the soles of its feet and the opticals of its eyes. I ask God and declare a healing this very moment. In Jesus' name, let the doctors even be baffled. Amen and amen. Now, Father, touch my sister Mary from the crown of her head, God, to the soles of her feet. And I ask God you to regulate this blood that shoots up and down. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. And I'm going to ask God to heal Frank. In the name of Jesus, that mass on his brain, I command it to dissolve and go back to hell where it came from and never to be found again. In Jesus' mighty, mighty name. Amen and amen. Ooh, hallelujah. Three weeks ago, I went to the eye doctor. They found a man... Or a a spot in behind my left eye here, and they said if you know if it didn't go away, it's going to have to stick a needle in my eye. And uh, but like I say, I was anointed three weeks ago, and I'm claiming the victory right now. But I have another physical need. Uh, God knows all about it, and I would like for this church to pray for me because I have faith in this church. I have been here about three times now, and I'll tell you what. This is a good place to be. <laughs> this is a good man here. I haven't I haven't known him that long, but I know he's a man of God, and what, what he says is real. It's real. I ain't seeing no needle go into no eye. You take your glasses off. I'm going to pour some of this in your eye. This is what we call a miracle water. It's been prayed over and blessed. There's no healing in it, but it's the act of faith and the right. obedience. Right. And I believe when you go back to the doctor, the doctor's even going to see some changes, and he's going to make a determination, no needle, because I ain't seeing no needle go in your eye. I rebuke that in Jesus' name. Uh, lay your head back, brother. Right where you just laid your hand. I'm praying for that. You hear me? I'm going to count to seven, God's perfect number. And if God's speaking to you, get out of your seat, please, and come and make it right, because it's between you and God. There's not one person in here I would ever e even dream or think about or want somebody to go to hell. I don't have altar calls every week. But there were some people that was here that should be here right now that should be at this altar.
For the Lord has said that I am in this place and to hearken to the Spirit this day. For I am here to make changes in your life, in your heart, your mind, your spirit, and in your home. For if thou shalt give and surrender this day, I shall lift thee up above all of your problems, and I shall stain you, and I will show you that I am that I am God, and able to do what I said I would do. If thou wilt walk in my spirit, and thou shalt stay close to me, saith the Lord, that I will bring you through the battle and the storms that's just around the corner that's coming upon the world as well as America. For I, the Lord thy God, has to let it happen in order to bring forth the pure in heart and those with the white robe that shall reign with me forever, saith the Lord. Whew. Just remember, you're out there in your seat. And there's people that God, God said there was nine people sitting in your seat that should be at this altar, but that's between you and God, as I said before. There is a way that we can get through what's coming upon America if we take a stand because God will lead you through it. I can't always tell you what I'm seeing in the realm of the spirit of what's coming because it offends some of you because of race or religion or uh, what I put out there is what some people call fear. But the Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of the wisdom and the wisdom is what you need this day coming forth. Wisdom to know God's voice, to know and understand what you're seeing in the midst of this nation. Mushiko Ramba Huka Tarabahashite Rosan of the Kicha Baba Hassan to the Hoshar of the Gotayan Nereshero Baboshe, the Kita Hanoshe to the Tamahaki Toshi Brinka Hano Hita Taishikite Boshen of the Behashita to Eshika Hanohoki Parehede Heshi Hamahakai Yerodore Shatan in the Tate Shukubat Prande ke be chita amahaki to o shika to da hato hander ya shedo amahaki. Prande he shiri ya baba she ta thai kore shene ne oka ena de pe to shipa pa priya tha ne ke te u ya shada anyeche anyeche da ho na hakia anyeche te ni ya te o shite amamahate ho to huji anyeche te no ka ne de che no ta na hakita. Ronda, 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 Gishita, the Bahaka Tuishi, Rinda Baboshita, and the Mordiko, Nahaka, and the Reshiko, Nanahai. For yea, the Lord has warned and warned and warned and sent his messengers forth, and yea, they stand back afar off. For I, the Lord thy God, is decreeing my messengers to stand strong and stand fast. For I, the Lord thy God, is sending a storm through this land that's going to wake up everybody. Everybody shall know that I am the Lord thy God and I change not. I am going to do things that you will not agree with. But my word shall stand forth and my word shall stand fast. And my word is my word, saith God. I am going to do something in America that's going to change the hearts of many people. Many people are going to fall to their face and knees and are going to scream for mercy. For the storm is coming. It's on the horizon, saith God. The storm is coming. It's on the horizon, saith God. The storm is coming, saith God. It's on its way. Woo. <laughs> Oh, 
Yea, hear me this day, my children, saith God, for I am in thy midst. Know that thy nation and thy government was trying to push me away, but for this land was founded upon me. And yea, watch for the eastern skies, for I will make my presence known, saith God. I will return in my own way in power and glory, saith the Lord. Know that I have not left thee, and I will not leave thee or forsake thee. But stay close to me, saith God, for the enemy has come down having great power and deceiving many. But know that I am in thy midst today. Stand together and unite as a servant in my army, saith God, for I need you today as you need me. Yea, stand for me, saith God, for many signs and miracles shall come forth. But even in the midst of the signs and miracles, the enemy is going to raise his head. But stand together, saith God, and I will give thee strength, and I will see thee through. Yea, yea, I am not finished with thy ministers yet, saith God, for I have much work to be done, and there is few that are willing to do what I have called them to do, saith the Lord. But stand in the gap and make up the hedge for thy brethren, saith God this day. Yea, yea, I will return in my own way very soon, saith God. through. 